Welcome to the Spiritual AF Life Podcast, a magical place where your host, Heather Danielle, psychic medium, will bring the mystical woo-woo world down to earth in practical ways. Tune in every Monday for your weekly reading and on Wednesdays to hear fascinating conversations with spiritual experts, uplifting stories, and deep dives into the metaphysical world, all to help you tap into the invisible guidance that's all around you. It's time to start living a spiritual AF life. Get cozy. The conversation is starting now. Oh my goodness. Guess what happened? Maybe you can intuitively pick it up. So I had done this amazing, epic episode with me and my husband discussing the same topic that we are going to talk about today, right now. And I'm going to spill the beans of that in just a moment. However, when I send it to my editor... He was like, it is 100% silent. I'm like, what? Not one word came through. I am still wondering how in the world that happened. So perhaps one day I will be able to get that conversation back up and share it with you. But right now, apparently, it was meant to be just you and me today. So I want to tell you that I am dedicating this episode to my friend, who recently passed a few days ago. And in her honor, so to speak, I want to talk about first death and dying, their transition, and then also some interesting concepts too when it comes to, you know, going to the other side and things like that. I thought it would be really interesting, number one, and I feel like we really need to talk about it because I feel, oh my gosh, I feel so many things. And what I am basing everything that I am talking to you about today, I'm basing it all off of my own experiences, talking with spirits for however many years that I've been doing that, exactly what I've been feeling and getting from them, and then also some of the things that I picked up and I learned about over the years. Now, many of you know, i and didn't open up until my gifts until, oh my gosh, I was like 30 or something along those lines. But before then, I was reading a lot of books, even though I was scared of it. And a lot of that I picked up from so many books. I will try and link as many books as I can remember in the comments below. And so there's something that I took from each one of these um, teachers, if you will. So I will put that in the show notes and anything else that I talk about today. So first thing that I want to talk about, and we're going to get right into it is the concept of death. I don't know about you, but I am getting so tired of people treating death like it's scary and it's horrible and it's just, ah. It's like, oh my gosh, death is something that is going to happen to each one of us. And I feel that as a society, we really need to stop having it be something that's scary because it's not. And this is something my husband keeps on saying, oh, well, this is our belief system. It's not a belief system when you have learned it or you have remembered it the way that like I have. It's no longer a belief. It becomes a knowing. Just like you know some things unequivocally inside of your life that it's no longer a belief. This is what you know. You feel in your soul. You feel in your heart that this is 1,000% true. And this is more than 1,000% true with my quote belief system that death is not what we make it out to be. And before I go into what I talk about with death and what how I wish that our society would look at it as, let's look at a lot of the evidence. So there is a story, and I'm going to put in the show notes that I watched recently, and it is a fireman who died, and he went to the other side, and he says the same exact thing. He says, death is a joke. You know, and people don't say anything, people say not to say anything about when people have these near death experiences. And it's because you're going to be looked at like a weirdo. But why is it that we look like weirdos when we listen to people or we might even have our own near death experience where it's doing something good for humanity? It's letting them know something amazing and wonderful. Like, hey, it is not the end. And I have proof and I visited it and I can tell you all about it. So it's kind of crazy that so many people have these experiences time after time after time after time. And 
then we're looked at, they are looked at as the weirdos. Like, oh my God, why are you saying that? That's so taboo. Which now in our society is becoming a little bit more normal. We are opening up our minds and our hearts to more spiritual concepts, if you will. So that is a big thing. And I love how he said that death is a joke. It is not what we think it is. And there is so many near-death experiences. In fact, that's all I watched probably and listened to for the first, I don't even know, like, the whole entire time I was in my 20s, I was going through such rough times. And those near-death experiences and those, those kinds of things just totally, like, I don't know what it did. It opened up my mind. It opened up my heart to other possibilities. And I just think it's a really big thing that we have this evidence right in front of us with so many people saying so many of the exact same things. And we're still looking at it like it's scary. What if we didn't do that? What if we lived in a place where when someone is transitioning to the other side, we don't say like, oh my God, like this is going to suck for you. You know, <laughs> we're like, oh my gosh, you're being called home. This means that you have fulfilled your life purpose. You have, you have seriously fulfilled all of your soul contracts. You actually have done everything. You have checked all the boxes and now you are going back home. I think of Earth as a school, and we're here to learn and grow and play with our friends, and then the other side is like our true home. And so when we are getting called back home, that means that we have done the curriculum, that we have checked those boxes, we have fulfilled all of our criteria to basically graduate. Now, the sad thing is, is that we don't know exactly when we're going to be graduating, and we don't know when we fulfilled those duties, but... That is the concept. That is the knowing. That is not just a belief. That is the knowing of what um, that I'm getting at today. So that is amazing. That is great that we still live on and we transition to the other side. And there's so many things that we can talk about with proof of this and that kind of thing. Mediums are one of them. Near-death experiences is another. Just so many things that we could bring forth that show that, yes, the soul does live on, even physics in a way. I will link in the show notes um, a podcast I did a couple weeks ago in case you missed it, but I get more into the science with um, Brandeline, um about that. So another thing that I want to bring up in this guy's story, and his story is not anything new or interesting, but it's just really, really cool, I guess, but it's the same exact thing that you hear about when people have near-death experiences, and he's like, life is an illusion, and it was a trick. It was a trick. Life is a dream. Okay, and the other side is real life. Isn't that amazing to think about? You're in a dream, and right now, you are waking up from that dream. If you are listening to me right now, if you are opening up spiritually, that means that you are waking up to the of the dream that is life. So many people are sleeping. So many, and what I mean by sleeping, it means that they are not open to bigger concepts. They might just be working their nine to five or they're just working all day and they just might be letting life live them and they're not really open to the, maybe the spiritual side of things, that life is more than we make it out to be and those kinds of things. So that's what I mean about life is a dream because now we are waking up and we are seeing behind the veil that there is more than meets the eye. And you get to this point where you can no longer fight it. That you are like, there's too many coincidences going on in my life. There is too many things happening one after another. That this cannot just be, you know, a coincidence. It has to be something pulling the strings. And I can bring up so many different examples. Like, I just want to bring up one really quick that's coming up to me. And that is, I had an, a surprise hysterectomy. And it was supposed to be a very quick procedure. And my oncologist that I was working with said, oh, Heather, it's not cancer. Well, shocked me, silly, when I woke up. And guess what? I had a complete hysterectomy. I had 32 staples going down my stomach. My 45-minute outpatient surgery turned into, I don't even know, over five hours. And they were like, we need to wait until the biopsy comes back to see if this was cancer. We had to take out everything. Like, what? 
So I'm trying to grasp my head around that as I am in the Van Elsander Cancer Center in Detroit. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what is going on. You know, I have doctors coming in saying, Heather, you know, not many people have died from your type of cancer. And I'm just like, whoa, I'm trying to really put my hand, head around this like what is going on and at the same time my husband leaves the hospital and he goes and picks up some items because now I'm going to be in here a while and he gets me a robe and he gets me these slippers and I remember looking at the slippers I remember trying on the slippers and I remember yelling at him and being like why did you get me these slippers these are way too small like you know why did you do that you're making me feel like I have fat feet <laughs> poor man oh my god because you know, the truth is, is that my feet were just extremely swollen. In fact, these slippers are just way too big for me. Like when my feet went down, like I can never wear those slippers again. But it took me a few days, if not until I got home from the hospital to realize that the slippers that he had bought me were the exact same slippers that my grandma used to wear. And if you don't know, my grandma was the most important person in the world to me. My grandma was my everything. And I remember watching her walk around in those slippers all of the freaking time. My husband didn't know that. And the slippers were blue, that like a dark royal blue. That was my grandma's favorite color. That's not my favorite color, you know? So I was like, like looking at my husband, like, do you even know me? Like, why are you buying me blue slippers? But I took that. And even as I talk to you right now, I take that as a sign from my grandmother because I can feel in my heart and I can feel myself getting emotional over it. And so that is just one of the examples of those little baby things that happen throughout our life that show us that, that there's signs and there's more to life. And if we keep on believing in these signs, these little coincidences and things like that, we are going to be like, wow, this is truly something magical happening. Now, I know that the slipper story might seem a little mundane and not as amazing. Believe me, I talk to freaking dead people like all of the time, okay? So there are some really cool things that can happen. But sometimes it's those little baby moments, those little things that happen throughout your day that wakes you up from the mundane life and it wakes you up into this dream that we're living. If you don't know this, when you are sleeping and you wake up inside of a dream, it's called lucid dreaming because you are aware of what you are dreaming and you can actually control your dream. The same kind of concept happens to us in our daily life. So when we wake up you know, to spirituality and we realize that there is more to life and so many other people are just letting life beat them up and just you know, not living it probably the best way, you know, that kind of sucks. And then what we can do is we can become lucid in our dream AKA our life that we're living now, and then actually manifest and create that life that we truly want and that we would like to experience. So we might be getting a little bit too deep. I'm not sure how you're feeling right now, but yes, life is an illusion. And now what we wanna do is I wanna take you through that concept. So now we talk to you about life, we talk to you about death. Now what truly happens when the person goes to the other side? And I've talked about this, I think, in another episode. I might link a little bit. But basically, what ends up happening is they transition. And then once they transition, the truth is they can communicate with us right away. You might hear some psychics and some mediums say, oh, you know, you need to wait a certain amount of time. That's That's not really true. Okay, so... They can talk to us right away, but the thing is, is that we have to honor our journey. We still have to honor the schooling that we're going through. We have to honor our grieving process. We still have to go through that. And I know this is going to be a hard concept to swallow, and believe me, it's hard for me as well, but apparently we signed up for this S-H-I-T. We signed up to feel the grief. We signed up to feel the bad things. And the thing is, is that we have to experience these bad things. Because guess what? When we go over to the other side, it's all 100% love and light. It's all fine and dandy. It's all 100% goodness. And nothing ever dies. Nothing ever felt whatever. Nothing ever breaks. So we're here because we can actually experience things that are fragile and things that might break and things that are die and things that are temporary. Isn't that kind of funny? And so one of the concepts that I remember reading about too is when we go to the other side, a rose is perfect. A rose is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with a rose. The rose is perfect in its entirety. Nothing can ever happen with that rose. 
But now when we come over here, that rose is fragile. We have to be delicate and we have to be gentle with that rose because if we don't, guess what has, ends up happening? The petals fell off and then no matter what happens, no matter, no matter how much we love this rose, it's going to die. That's something we can't experience on the other side. And also there's that concept too that your life is a movie right now and you are the star of that movie. And now any good movie you are going to have the character show up and they think that life might be fine and dandy, but then they have to go through some BS in order to have that transformation. So they have to go through that bullshit. They have to go through that bad stuff to be able to have that transformation and to really get to be the person that they want to be. And maybe they didn't even know that being that person was even something they could be. And now if you think about it in your own life, maybe you went through something that was really tough and then what ends up happening, you get over it and then you're almost better because you had went through it. Now, when that guy that I talked about, um, the one, the video I just watched who went through the near-death experience, he talks about going over to the other side and there's these old friends that he has. And he doesn't really remember them too much, but he remembers the feeling of being with them. Like, oh my gosh, like I can't put my finger on it, but you are definitely somebody that I hung out with. And so, and then I really loved, and they were all like, oh my God, OMG, WTF, like, what was it like? What happened? What did you learn? They're all like giddy with excitement. It is tough incarnating here on earth. But the thing is that it is almost like this really big virtual reality, or it's kind of like your own little video game, however you want to put it, your own little movie. And so we forget that it's like that. And then when we go to the other side, we're like, oh my God. So this is what happens when they go to the other side. So they can connect with you right away. A lot of psychics and mediums don't do that because you have to honor the grieving process. And then also some newer psychic mediums may not be able to connect to them because a lot of times, at least in my experience, they come across a little bit lighter. So they might not be able to notice that their energy is there. So that's just one little thing to think about. Now, they sometimes go through a life review. That's usually one of the first things, you know, so they think about, you know, what happened in their life. And it's a little bit more than just watching their life play out before their eyes. They get to feel, see, be all of the people that they ever interacted with in their life. And so it kind of just goes a little bit more, how do I say this, a little bit more serious in a way, because... It kind of sucks that if you hurt someone in this life, and maybe you have some of that pain that's still in your heart, but that sucks because when you go on the other side, you are going to feel that pain as if you were with them. So that part kind of sucks. But then you also get to feel that love that you brought and that happiness that you brought to others, and you also get to feel that. Now, the good news is I don't want you to bring, beat yourself up too much about, you know, oh, when you go to the other side and people that you hurt and the things that you've done wrong. Don't get caught up in that because it is perfect over there. And they know that everything is perfect over here. So everything that has happened has happened for a reason. And you don't have to worry about it. Because, same concept, you might have hurt somebody. And that might have been a learning experience for them that made them a better person. Does that make sense? So it's almost like a vice versa kind of thing. People have hurt you and things have happened to you to make you a better person. But the things that you have done for others also can make them a better person and have them have a better lesson and, you know, a little bit more fun or maybe a little bit more of a, what is it called, a harder curriculum here on earth. And so that's okay because it's almost like a gift that you gave them. I know it sounds kind of tough and like hard to wrap your mind around it, but it's like really, I really may not, may not have done really well for this person. But because I wasn't the perfect person, because I messed up and did all these things, I made them a better person and I helped with their soul evolution? The answer is yes. Kind of cool, huh? And so now they're on the other side. They do the life review. And basically, I want you to get this concept in your mind, is that they are still who they are. They still have their soul. They are still Mike, Jerry, Tom, whoever that their names are. They are still them. But they are also all of the other people that they ever lived and incarnated here on earth. So they are all of them. They go back to their soul, but their soul still has, you know, the, the specs, the pieces of the people that they were in every single life. They're still very much like that. Think of it as being specks of the divine, and then each speck is unique. 
it's a unique and amazing and wonderful and all those things. And so now they become one with the consciousness, if you want to call it that, with the divine, with spirit, with God, whatever you want to call it. And then if they want to, they can also go back to the one source. So how I picture this is, you know, the divine, the spirit, the one consciousness is the sun. Okay, just picture it as a sun. And then we are all little sparks of the sun. But we are still all connected, almost like the avatar kind of situation. And then you can still be that little speck of the divine, or you also have the choice to go back into the sun and be part of that one consciousness again and just melt into it. And then that might be, be a little scary to you, like, what? Like, oh my God, like, how in the world can I do that? But it feels so good. It's almost like this cosmic orgasm, if you will. And it's like, oh my gosh, I get to melt back into the one consciousness. And it's not scary at all. It's very, very beautiful. And I just have to tell you that I'll... Like many people in my life, I had had a hard time grasping my mind around organized religion. Now, I was a Lutheran growing up, and then even in my young adult years, I was very devoted to my Lutheran church, and I still love them, still have so much respect and just gratitude towards them, especially in that time of my life. But one thing I never got the concept of is where do new souls come from? Like, I just never got that, and they never answered that question. But that question is answered here and now, and that is that sun concept I just told you about, and we are the sparks. Those little sparkles can just keep on popping out, millions and zillions of them. It is infinite, and that is where new souls come from. So if you think about it, our population of Earth has just what quadrupled you know, in the last like years and things like that. It's like, where are all these souls coming from? And that is how it works. It's because it kind of just, um, what is it called? Sparkles off, if you will. And then we have like a lot of these new souls. And then we also have a whole bunch of the old souls. And that's how it works. And it's an amazing concept. So I hope that you like that. And that is kind of what happens on the other side. And now there's a couple other theories. And I'm just going to run some by you right now because... Just in case you ever heard of them, this kind of will confirm, or if you're curious, these are some other things that they say also happens. They also say, too, that you can live out all of your earthly fantasies, you can do whatever you want, so you can build your own, what is it called, own little earth, if you will, and you can just play out all of those things, and then once you get that all out of your system, you go up to the different levels. And so that would just be like, okay, I'm going into this earthly level where I could just play out all of my things. You could have that yacht you always wanted and you could just get all that out of your system and then you go up and that where is where you might incarnate again. You might work on a different part of your soul's purpose where you might also become a guide to somebody else. And then you can just keep on going up those levels and as your soul grows. Kind of interesting, isn't it? It really is. Okay, so now, a couple of questions that my husband had that I talked to him about during that podcast was, do more people become open when they're about to pass? Now, of course, many of us can say without a doubt, yes, of course, you become more open. And the reason behind that is because the veil thins. Before my friend passed away, I knew the day before that she was transitioning to the other side. So it's almost like she had one foot in this world and one foot in the other world because she was starting to make that transition. Some people's transition is very quick. Some of them is much more slowly. So if you have a person that is on hospice or have gotten sick and things like that, their transition might be a little more slowly. And then that's where you might get those experiences where they talk to other people on the other side or people who have passed. Now, one thing, and I even did tell this to my friend, too, before she passed, because she was like, wow, um, am I going, she's like, I actually had a dream about someone who passed away, and they said that they were going to come get me, and they said that they were going to come get me soon, and that I didn't have much time left, and I believe she had 10 days from the day that that dream happened until the time she passed, she had 10 days, and I think it kind of surprised her, too, that, you know, probably was only 10 days. And I was like, hey, I was like, that makes a lot of sense that you had the dream. Because number one, it's very, very common for people to have that experience in dreams or also during their waking life when they're getting closer to transitioning. 
And I was like, but for people who are very logical, very grounded, for people who are very stubborn in their mind, who have a very strong mental concept, if you will, it is very common for them to have it as dreams because they won't allow themselves to have that experience when they're awake just because basically they're so hard-headed. So they will have the dream of the person. And I thought that was really, really interesting because I was like, girlfriend, I know how hard you are, like hard-headed and stubborn and all that stuff. So to me, it just makes so much sense that you had it as a dream. Same thing with my mom. My mom did not talk out loud about anybody that she saw. In fact, my aunt, her sister, was like, Heather, is your mom talking to people who aren't there? She's like, that's a sign that she's going to pass. And I was like, no. I was like, nope. She only talks to them in their dreams because I would stay the night at my mom's hospital um, bedside and I would listen to her and sometimes I'm like oh my gosh a couple of times I was like I feel like she's talking to angels right now but my mom was that type to where she wouldn't allow herself to do that she all she made she wanted to keep her wits about her until that very end like she was like that and so it doesn't surprise me at all that they come forward in dreams if you're that type of person now there's something that I didn't think I was going to talk about, but since it's coming up right now, I feel like I do have to talk to you about it. And that is who passes when. First off, we do choose when we're going to pass. We choose how we're going to pass. And there also are things called exit points in your life where you might actually be able to leave sooner than you want. And this is basically stating that, okay, if you're in a car accident, like my mom was at 16, that could have been an exit point for her where she's like, okay, I'm leaving now. But my mom chose not to go, so she ended up having that car accident when she was 16, and she only had issues with her knee, and she had to have surgery on her knee and things like that. So we have these exit points in which we can leave our earthly life. And it might sound sad, like why in the world would you want to leave? But the thing is, is that we understand on a soul level that everything is akuna matata. Everything is going to be okay here on the earthly plane if we leave. Our family, our friends, our kids, everybody is going to be fine because we know that it's an illusion. We know that it's not real. They're going to be okay. In fact, that video that I keep on talking about, about the guy who had a near-death experience, he was like, hey, my, my wife and my kids or whatever, they're going to be sad for a couple of weeks, but they're going to get over it. And so we're okay with leaving, all right? We are 100% okay with leaving on a soul level. In fact, sometimes, you know, we might be even more okay with leaving because we're like, oh, like I'm exhausted. But my friend Teresa, who passed, we were talking about this, and it is so true. She was like, wow. She was like, I never thought that I would go first. I always thought that my husband would go first because my husband can't live without me. She was like, I have to, while she's sick and everything else, get everything situated for her estate. And I was like, yeah, I was like, but you know what? It makes sense on a soul level that she is going first because on a soul level, he needs to learn to possibly like take care of himself or he needs to learn to, you know, be strong like she was or fill her shoes. There might be something going on with him on a soul level to where it's like, okay, he needs to learn and he needs to have this experience. Isn't that kind of crazy? It's a really weird concept. And you almost want to think about it in your life. I talk about it all the time with my husband, maybe not all the time, but a lot. I'm like, wow. My husband's like, I can't live without you, Heather. He was like, I would, you know, he's like, you, you can't go first. And then I'm like, yeah, but then maybe I can't live without my husband, even though I think sometimes that I can. Can I really? Because he truly is my rock. He's my sanity point. He's like so much of everything in my life. Like I could not imagine him going. But then again, we both agreed that I could probably live longer with him. But is that the case on a soul level? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. It's kind of interesting sometimes. And I'm really happy that I got to have that conversation with her. Okay, so now my husband also asked this. He asked if we can go back into another time because he's very sad that him on a soul, not only on a soul level, but he is having to live here and now in the 2020s and he really loves the 50s and he really wants to go back in time and he really wants to have that experience. And basically what I told him too, I was like, your soul is too big to fit inside of your body. So your soul is also on the other side, just as it is right now in your vessel, 
your body. So think about it, maybe a quarter of it is inside of your vessel and then three quarters of it is on the other side. So I was like, hey, your soul already knows what you want. So your soul is already planning a life if it hasn't already in the 1950s. And then, by the way, we got into this concept of time and how time is not linear and all these other things. So I'm like, your past lives that you're living right now are not really past. They're all happening simultaneously. And so that's a really difficult concept to grasp. And if you look into the work of some amazing physicists, including Stephen Hawking, he tries to go into that a little bit. But honestly, like my brain just gets fried even thinking about it. Like I cannot get that concept because I'm like, wait a second, the sun rises and sets every single day. So how in the world can time not be linear? It's like a freaking schedule that we're on. Like I still don't get that part. But that's the thing and that's the reason why that I love spirituality like this is because it has the answers. And the answer to that question is maybe one day we can understand it. Maybe one day physics, science can catch up to us, but at this moment in time, our human brain cannot comprehend that. Maybe it will one day. Think about so many things that we can't comprehend. Like for example, Stonehenge, the pyramids, you know, what in the world? We can't even grasp that. Sometimes, and I'm not sure if you ever do this, but sometimes I even just look outside and I am like, wow, the fact that I'm living here on this incredible planet and the planet runs the way that it runs, it's just mind boggling to me. It's like we have an ecosystem that has to stay in balance. And if one little thing messes up, like if the bees leave, you know, oh my God, little baby bees. And if those leave, like our freaking environment is screwed. Like what in the world? And it's so beautiful and it's just so amazing when you look at life every single day and the fact that you can even comprehend that and you have this voice inside of your head that's conscious, it's just so cool. I don't know why, but it just like spaces me out a little bit. So I just had to share that, um, share that little tidbit and those things with you. But I really hope that this episode helped you out a little bit with understanding about the concept of death and also the transitioning process. And then also just like a little bit of what it's like on the other side. Now, I go into more details in an episode about my near-death, well, sorry, it's not near-death experience. It was an out-of-body experience. There was a difference. I was not going to die. But I literally, with my own eyes, this is not something that was imagined, meditated upon. Like, my eyes were still open when I seen this. And I seen the bodies of the people in front of me melt away and I seen the golden light that they were made out of. And it was almost like the golden light that we are inside. It is just, it had the shape still of a human. It was almost like a cookie cutter, if you will. Like we each have our own little cookie cutter bodies, if you will. And then our golden white light is just encapsulating it. And so I see that with my own eyes. So it's like, wow, when people say that you are love and light, you are a speck of the divine. It's like, I seen that with my eyes. It was the most amazing thing ever. In fact, when they told me to close my eyes, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to. But I seen it like just melting away. And so that is truly what we are. And I think it's amazing. I think it's a lot of fun when you think about it in this perspective. And I know my friend Teresa, she has not really contacted me since, but I know that she's having fun on the other side. And when we go to transition, we have a big welcoming party that welcomes us back home and into the other side. And that is because we are graduating. We're finally coming home. And then even though it has been 60, 70, 80 years for us, hopefully, hopefully we get up there, maybe 90s, that'd be awesome, right? Hundreds even though it's been that long for us and it seemed like a very long time. Over on the other side, it is not. Over on the other side, it's like seconds. But they know how hard it is for us, so they are this front, like their front and center waiting for you. And they are so freaking happy because they can't wait to talk to you about everything that you've experienced and how it was. And then this is one thing that I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get some answers, man. Like, why in the world did this happen? Where in the world did my missing items go? Like, 
what in the world was up with this? Like, I literally cannot wait sometimes to go on the other side and be like, okay, I need some freaking answers. Like, where did this person go? Um, I want to know, was a Loch Ness Monster truly real? Like, I know, you know, like, just think about all those questions that you're going to have. I have so much. Number one, I want to make this the most badass, awesome life I've ever lived. I want Heather to be one of the people that I were, was when I came down here to be the freaking best incarnation ever. That's one of my goals. But then my other thing is, is that when I go to the other side too, I just want to like have a lot of these things answered. Like, did aliens truly help us with the pyramids? Which we probably all know that's a yes, but it's like, okay, how did that work? I really want to know. And then also, I lost my jacket and I really don't know where it was. Can you please show me where that was? And then I'm going to kick myself in the butt because I'm going to be like, oh, that's where it was. Or be like wait a second, why did this person do this to me in this life? Because that was really effed up. And I really want to know like what the heck was written in the contract with them so that I can like make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> so I hope that this kind of like, gave you a little bit of insight onto the death of dying process, the transitioning process and the other side. I hope that it helps you see that we don't have to take life so seriously. And it's a lot more fun. And I don't know, I just hope that it makes you feel a little bit better and I hope it makes you feel a little bit more closer to those who have already transitioned on the other side because they were right there with you. They understand how hard it is in this lifetime and they are not leaving you whatsoever. All right, I had so much fun talking to you and I cannot wait to see you on Sunday for Coffee and Cards. I hope to see you then. Thanks for tuning in to the Spiritual AF Life Podcast. You'll find all the links to resources and more in the show notes. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the incredible episodes that are